Hello and welcome, I'm Ash Mannix, and today I want to talk about the first ever PCB that I ever designed. Something a little bit different from the usual gameplay videos. I suppose it's not too far off from some of the other software dev videos I've done. Now, how did I end up doing this? It's interesting because the reason I went down this rabbit hole was because a friend of mine asked me if I could help him out. He was like, Ash Mannix, you dog, you can code. And I was like, I mean, kind of, yeah. And he was like, oh, well, then help me with my project. I produce this PCB that does stuff with this electronic device. It, yeah, it does things. You twist a knob, you select things, and bish bash bosh, things happen. It's based on the Arduino processor, written some co code for it. But it's kind of inefficient, and I think you can do a better job. Well, the conversation didn't go exactly like that. That's just kind of how I've imagined it in my head. But yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Now, I hadn't really written code for microcontrollers. Well, not since uni days, uh, which was many moons ago. So I had to relearn everything. Uh, but being, on, being asked to help a friend, I quite happily agreed that it would be fun learning a code for the Arduino. My friend lent me an early version of the hardware he'd made, so I went to task with trying to improve the code. The world had changed since the days I was in uni. Turns out that it's relatively easy to get started coding for the Arduino, especially since they supply their own Arduino IDE and have fantastic documentation. Now, the Arduino code is based in C++, I believe, in coding libraries to help you along. Now, I'd used C++ for my OBS countdown plugin, shameless plug, which was handy experience for this project. I went through the code, asking a million questions in the process to try and understand what was happening, and spent a good few months refactoring the code to try and make it more efficient, easier to read, and all that jazz. When I handed over the updated code, my friend was elated, or at least mildly pleased. And so I got to talking to him about the project and asked how he had designed and manufactured this PCB for the hardware. He explained to me that he had used Autodesk Eagle to design the PCB and a website called GLC PCB to manufacture it in China and have it delivered to him. This intrigued me. Wouldn't it be fun to design a simple PCB and get it manufactured? What did I do? So I had this goal to design a simple PCB, but no particular idea in mind of what to actually design. I needed to figure out how to design it as I wasn't going to use Autodesk Eagle as it was expensive and I'm cheap. I wondered if there was an open source alternative that did the same job. Ta-da! Turns out there is. A few even. And the one I settled on was KiCad, and it's kind of amazing. One of the reasons I chose KiCad was that there's quite a lot of information out there on how to use it. I went to where I usually go when I'm trying to figure out how to do something. YouTube. And came across this brilliant YouTube channel called Phil's Lab. I had a lovely tutorial on how to design and manufacture a PCB using KiCad. Watching it got me excited. It was time for me to try it for myself. I ended up settling on the idea to design a PCB that lit up some LEDs because it would be flashy, literally. I would copy an existing board design to do this as a first attempt. I looked online and came across a PCB design that drove an 8x8 LED matrix called the FC16 board. It was a small PCB and relatively simple to duplicate. So the idea was to replicate the circuitry in KiCad, go through the process of design and upload to a manufacturer's website, and then go through the process with a manufacturer to try and get this made, hoping that it ended up working. Thanks to the Phil's Lab tutorial, this wasn't too difficult, and honestly, I recommend going to their channel and having a look at some of their videos. Having a bit of knowledge of electronic design helps, but even without it, the combination of KiCad and the type of tutorials you can get online on YouTube make it a lot easier for you to make at least simple PCBs, especially if you're producing digital-only circuits. In KiCad, I mainly used the schematic and PCB editors, which allowed me to first build out the circuit design in the schematic editor and then place the parts on PCB using the PCB editor. The FC16 board used a chip called the MAX7219, which was the LED driver for the LED matrix. The MAX7219 would be driven by a couple of I.O. ports from the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, I made a couple of changes to design compared to the original. I chose a purple colour for the PCB because, obviously, purple is the best colour, and I could. 
I designed the board to be modular so that you could add a bunch of these PCBs side by side. So they had male and female ports on each side to allow them to be daisy chained. And I also added in some branding too. I had five boards manufactured. With all five boards, I paid for the component placement service, which did add to the cost significantly. It was quite expensive, but the more you order, the more cost effective it becomes. When the boards finally arrived, I wired them up to a Raspberry Pi Pico, ran the test software that included a C++ library for communicating with a Max 7219 chip, and crossed my fingers. And it worked. Now, what did I learn from this? The main thing I learned was the basics of how to use KiCad. The learning curve was surprisingly gentle due to a combination of good online documentation and quality YouTube tutorials from people like Phil's Lab. The fact that it's free, open source, and is regularly updated is a massive bonus. I learned basic digital circuit design, how to create the circuit schematic, and how to use the PCB editor to position the parts and ensure that all the lines are connected to each other on the board. I was able to use KiCad to output the required manufacturing files, and there was a whole bunch of them. Again, I'll make sure to put a link to the Phil's Lab tutorial video in the description of this video so that you can have a look at it yourself. He goes into more detail about the required files for manufacturing. I also learned about the process of ordering parts from a PCB manufacturer which becomes more complex when you want them to place the PCB components as well. You can either buy the components and have them sent to you separately, or you can have the PCB manufactured with the components as well, like I did. This is a bit faffy because you have to match the components you require to parts from the manufacturer. They do a good job of trying to automatically match components to specific parts, but sometimes you'll have to manually search for the parts on the manufacturer's parts website yourself. Conclusion the idea of this was just to go through the whole process of designing a PCB and getting it sent to me for me to actually plug it in and for it to work. It was quite an involved process. It took a couple of months to do, but it was massively satisfying. And actually, I kind of got bitten by the PCB bug after this. It's kind of awesome how relatively easy it was to design a PCB and get it manufactured. The process of design was fun. Receiving and wiring up my PCB and seeing it working gave me a feeling quite different from when a piece of software I've worked on successfully runs. Designing software can be very satisfying and it's really cool, especially if you're working on stuff like games and things like that that you really enjoy making. But it was nice to have something physically made from what I designed. It's similar to when I've played around with 3D printing in the past and designed very basic objects in 3D modeling software and had them printed out. I do want to get back into this and try other things in electronic hardware design. Having said that, I did work on a design that was a bit more complex and produced a PCB that had a Raspberry Pi Pico integrated into it. But I'll talk about that in another video, hopefully. But for now, I'll leave it there. I am Ashmanix. This was me rambling about my first PCB design. And I'll hopefully see you guys next time. Bye bye.